All right, it's time to do movie number four, The Horizon Up. I want to just do the white area first. To make that selection, remember I never pathed out a horizon up path. I only pathed out a horizon down path. So now what we have to do is go back to our overall car. I'm going to command click the overall sheet metal, which I've just done. And now I want to actually subtract the horizon down. So I have now accomplished the horizon down. Now I want to go back and subtract from that the rear end. Okay, so I go down to where I have the rear dark and hold command option and I subtract that. Okay, now I've actually isolated out the horizon up. What I'll do, and I want to make two of these, is I'm going to take and make a selection which looks just like that. So I went up to select and I saved that selection. Now I want to make a second one because I want to actually eliminate the area where the windows are. And I have an area that I pathed out for that. So let me click up to the RGB image and let's go down to where I have, it should say, my glass there rear black uh, window black outer so I'm going to hold command option and I'm going to subtract the whole window area of it so I'll show you what I'll have in a second and I'll go to select and save selection and let me go horizon up whoops up underscore no windows because I when I put the white on there I'd like to make as little pain in the butt as I have to to go back and fix stuff so let me move this all the way up in channel so that you can see that I, I like organization I'm not gonna have something that isn't near my other horizon up let's hit command s to save the file and then so I can keep this thing functioning real well guess what I'm gonna do after I've done that let's go in now and paint the white so with me selected onto the first layer that is the horizon up let me make sure I find it right there horizon up white I'm gonna hit the B key make my brush about this big right there paint at about five on the flow grab the white the nice and clean white let me see how clean white it is that's pretty darn clean and let's just paint right on top of this try to keep a bit I don't care about this line that I'm pointing at right now because that's the next shape I'm going to do for you so you can see how to clean up and make the little shapes actually define the big shapes. And it's that's the cool part of Photoshop because you're working in layers. Let me go across the car right here. Let's go across the car here. Let's go across here. Good. This is real good. Okay, real good. Okay, now let's turn off the clicky copy and see what I actually have. Um, uh, I did, uh, and I need, I need to turn other things. Whoops, I turned off my sheet metal. <laughs> Sorry. Now, um, let me turn on the clicky copy one more time. I made two clicky copies for a reason. I dimmed one just if I would need it later. Um, this is a clicky copy at full value. This is a clicky copy very dimmed. Can you see where the white is that I need to get real clean here? Look at how I've cleaned up that whole area that's now nice and clean and white and now I have everything I need to start the next phase. Let me hit command D to deselect. So here is what we have so far. Look at how now I have really gotten the car to start to form the things it needs to form. Now in the text file, we're going to go to the next shape, and I'm going to click up to the shape that I want to describe. We're going to go to the, um, I need to find my text edit file, there it is. When I said make a shape, um, there's two things I want to show. Path out the shape. If feathered, draw to the middle of the feather. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Then it says fill it with the color you want. Then Gaussian Blur to the most of it and Layer Mask to the least of it. Now what that means is Gaussian Blur to the most of the feather you see in the reference and then Layer Mask it back to the least of the feather in the reference. So I'm going to repeat that about 286 million times. So let's click back to here and let's get close. Let me go to this front shape because it really is a 
perfect example. This is the one that I call on the right, so I'll click right up to it. And let me go down here, and of course in my horrible thing here, let me see if I can find that real fast. I have it right here. Look at that shape. Now let me turn on the clicky copy so you can see it. Um, let me hit the P key so I can identify it. Now I'm going to turn off, and if I'm I have, in order to turn a path off and on and you can't get to the bottom of the path, hold the shift key and you can turn the path on and off. So there's the path on, there's the path off. Now, let me turn it back on so you can see something. Look at how I feathered it to the middle of the feather, to the best of my ability of where the middle of that feather is. I mean, it's not as identifiable a shape as that mirror, of course, but it is a shape I can draw. And when I say I can draw it, look at how I can actually look and see where the middle of the feather would be here. So just path it out, path it out down this way and across back up to the middle of the feather. Now here is a perfect example, as good as I want to make it on screen, of how to paint this shape. Now I lost where my shape is. It's right there. Okay to the right. Okay, I've made that into a selection. I'm going to hit the B key and grab the most color that I can find there. Now, let me just keep this nice and close on screen. Okay, I'm not going to back away from it. So I'm going to turn off the clicky copy, make sure I'm selected onto the layer and option delete and fill. Now, look at how that is exactly the shape that I want. Let me turn the clicky copy on. Do you see how that's a perfectly hard shape? Watch how simple this shape is to fix. The first thing you have to do is attach a layer mask to that shape, but with no selection active. If you have a selection active, I'll make a mistake. I'm going to command click on that layer right now to turn it into a selection. And I'm going to hit the layer mask icon and look at how I have a big look over here. Look at how the layer mask has a bunch of black on it. You don't want that. You don't want your layer mask to look like that at first. You want your layer mask to be nothing but a white canvas. Now, you don't have to get rid of it. Watch how simple it is to fix that. All I'd have to do is hit Command A to select all, and since the background color is white, I just go Command Delete and fill it up with white. Now, that's important, because now I'm going to click back to the image, and I'm going to Gaussian blur it to the most of it. So, I need to have this car way over here. So let me hit the V key and put the small color copy right next to the other thing that we're working on so I can have them both on screen to a point where you can see both of them. Now click back to your first image Mr. Sorio and what is the most feather you see up in here? Let me turn on the clicky copy so we can discuss it. This I would estimate to be about a four or five pixeled feather right here. Let, let's, let's just judge it. Look at the Look at the horizon up on the car. That's about a two-pixeled feather. If that's a two-pixeled feather, that's at least twice as that, so that must be about a four-pixeled feather. What would you say that is right here? I can't hear you. Um, no, it's not 20. It's about, and it's not 8. I'd say that's somewhere in between 20 and 8, which is about 12, 13, 14, 15. But why don't you not worry about it? Why don't you just let Gaussian Blur handle it for you? So, I've always said this, and I'll say it in class, why should I work on this shape? I may mess it up, so I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to put it down into the new layer icon, turn it off, and click to the one I can mess up. Now, I don't care if I mess this one up, because I can always throw it away and start back over on this shape. So go to Filter, Blur, make sure you're selected on the image, not the mask, and go to Gosh and Blur. Now you tell me, watch how easy this is. That's on 14.4. Don't look at any of these other edges but the top edge. Is this good or is it too much? It's too much. Let's go down to about 10. Gosh, I'd say 10 is just about perfect. So now let's click OK. OK, that's Gaussian Blur to the most of it. Now how do you layer mask to the least of it? The answer is you go back to your selection and I have to find it again, da, 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 right there. Command click, wrong one, command click on this. And now we're going to paint black on the layer mask to reduce the Gaussian blur on this side, on the right hand side there, and a little bit on the left hand side there. So now you tell me, 
what is that feather as it goes up the right hand side? I'm going to inverse the selection. Going to select modify feather is shift F6. So on a laptop it's function shift F6. I'm going to put it on about a four pixel feather. Now I'm going to hit command H. Now watch how cool this is. You take your brush, make it real tiny here, and I'm going to paint black on the layer mask. Look at the foreground and background color. It's blue in the foreground and black on the background color. As soon as I hit the layer mask, it switches. It knows that I want to work in black and white. So now I'm going to run my brush up and down this edge, only up and down this edge right there, and look at the magic of Gaussian blurring to the most of it and layer masking to the least of it. Now, let's work this side. Watch how I can run the brush up this side and Gaussian blur it, I mean layer mask it to the least of it. Now that's a perfect example of how to accomplish a shape on a car or on a product that you have allowed Gaussian blur to help you do the most of the feather and then you had a layer mask to help you do the least of the feather. Did that make sense? Of course, I'm hit command H, of course I had to hit hit inverse and then paint black on the outside. By me painting black on the outside, I can't mess up the inside, but I did have to guesstimate on that amount of the feather. Let me hit command D to deselect. Now, let me turn the clicky copy back on so you can see something. I still have too much value on the top. So all I have to do with no selection active, turn off the clicky copy, I am going to let my little color copy tell me when to stop painting. I need to actually eliminate. Painting black up here, I need to help me eliminate some of that paint on the top. Now look at how neat that is. I mean, I don't know if I can get any better than that. Let's turn on the color copy and let's just see what that looks like. And I, I'm just about perfect. I mean, do I have to be any more than that? No, I think that's great. Now let's do the same thing on the back of the car. So let me hit Command D to deselect. And now let's do the back shape on the car. I'll hit the V key for the move tool, right hand click and switch to my small color, and let's get this out of the way so that you and me can see everything we need to see so that I have a little color copy next to me, Command S to save the file. Now look over in my layer palette. I don't need that shape anymore that I made as a safety, so I'm going to throw it away. That was smart. I made a safety. I don't need it. Now I have a layer for the left hand shape. Let me turn on the clicky copy so you can see that. Two things are going to happen with this. We're going to lay in a hard shape right here where I'm pointing. So I take the B key and I grab that color right there. I'm going to Gaussian blur it to the most of it and layer mask it to the least of it. Now I've already pathed out that shape. It's called the left hand side. Where did I put it? Right there. Now I'm going to command click it. Now look at how I have actually pathed out that entire shape. Yes, I didn't actually path out the little thing I have to subtract from the back end. So I have to find my rear end and do what? How do you subtract the rear end from this? You hold command and what? Option and you command click on it and now look at how you command option click on it and now I've subtracted that out uh, Yeah, I could save it as a selection, which is cool. It didn't take me long to do but I think I've actually done that um, I don't know where I've done that and so I'm not going to worry about that shape horizon up blue one I think I've done it right there, but that's okay. I'm just going to leave it alone and maybe I will do it maybe I'll select it and save it as um, horizon up blue on the left. Okay, at least I have it saved. Let me hit Command H and let's fill up that shape. So, am I selected on the right layer? Yes. I'm turning off the clicky copy? Yes. Option delete and fill? Yes. Now, look at that big ugly shape. Now, all we have to do is fix this big ugly shape. Now, how do we do it? We Gaussian blur it to the most of it. We layer mask it to the least of it. No big deal. Let me deselect. Okay, what did I say you need on a layer that you have to Gaussian blur it to the most of it and layer mask it to the least of it? The answer is you need a mask with no selection active. So the mask is white. 
to command S to save the file. Now, what do I need to Gaussian blur to the most of? Let's turn on the clicky copy or let's move this upper clicky copy color copy thing down. Make sure I have no selection active and let's move it right in place. Okay, now let's get them both on screen so you can play the game with me. Obviously this side that I'm running my brush, my um, move tool up on is the most of it. So you look over here and let's judge by looking at this. So I click back up on the image, turn it off and on to make sure I have the right image. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now let's go do, is, is 10.6 enough? I don't think so. Let's go up to 19. Point three. Gosh, that looks almost exactly what it wants to be. Look at how you have a nice, a good feel of this edge, and look at how you have a good feel of this edge. Now, what happened? I Gaussian blurred it to the most of it. Okay, this doesn't want to be feathered any at all here, and it doesn't want to be feathered on that back edge. So what do you do? The answer is you click to the layer mask, you find your shape like I'm finding right now, let me again subtract by going command option on the rear dark. Okay, that's cool. Or I could have gone down in channels because yes, I did save the channel. Now what do I want to do? I don't want to paint inside the shape. I want to paint where? Outside the shape and I want to paint in black on the layer mask. So I hit command shift I to inverse. You tell me how many feathers is, is right about here. Let me, let me get close. What is that feather here and what is that feather here? Well, the answer is it's about two or three pixels, probably on both. So I'll just go Shift F6, uh, Function Shift F6. Let's go three pixels on the feather and let's hit Command H. And now all I have to do is take my black and my paintbrush, double, triple check that I'm on the layer mask and paint here. And look at how black now cleaned up that whole edge right across here. Now look it up there. Let me turn on the clicky copy. We have to make this sharper right here. So watch how simple black is going to come right in here and clean up that edge and make it really beautiful. Now in a few minutes I'm going to have to darken the other side but look at when I turn the clicky copy on and off. Oops. Look when I turn the clicky copy on and off. Look at how close I am on that shape. It's almost beautiful. Now, here's the beautiful part about layer masking. I don't need half this tone that went up this way. So I deselect. I make sure I'm selected onto the layer mask. Hit your paintbrush for the B key. Toggle up the brush a little bit bigger. Let me turn on the color copy so you can see what I'm talking about. Look at how there is not a lot of blue on there. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to paint black on here until it's gone. And now all I have to do is look up here to tell me when to stop the painting process. Okay, that's not a bad rendition of the start of this car. Let me turn off the small color copy. Let me hit Command S to save. Now watch when I actually flip on the clicky copy. My goodness, we're getting there. I need to reduce a little bit more because the clicky copy has this being a little bit brighter. So let me just keep on clicking. Oh, that's turning out so nice. Now what happens? What happens if I make a horrible error and I actually paint this out too much right there? All I have to do is hit the X key and paint it back in and all I'm doing is re-establishing that. Look at how easy that was to fix, okay? And that's all you have to do. X key on, X key off. Now let's turn on the clicky copy and see if I'm good. Yeah, that's really pretty. Maybe just a little bit more right along this edge. Just a little bit more. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, now look at how clean I've made that back end. Now all we have to do is start painting these little shapes on here. And those little shapes are really, really easy. I've already actually pathed some of those little shapes out. Let me command click on a couple of things and see where the heck I put them. There's that shape right there. Look at that little tiny shape that I could actually, I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to get close on that. Let's grab that color. Let's put another layer above here and let's call it number three. Let's go horizon up. Whoops, 
horizon up underscore um, blue three. Now, all I have to do is paint while the cl clicky copy is on. If I'm painting on that layer and I grab this color right here and I hit Command H, if I paint, let me grab this lightest value right there, if I paint with that on, look at how neat this is going to go on there and let me turn off the clicky copy and look at how I'm starting to paint that beautiful, did I make a boo-boo? No, that was where the line went. Look at how nice that looks. Look at how fast that went in. I mean, that's almost ridiculous. Now I just need to gauge and blur it a tiny bit and then layer mask it. I've even drawn out these little changes. See where it changes and the reflection comes in right here? I've drawn those out. Those are going to be the next higher layers because this is a smaller shape than the overall shape and this is the teeny tiniest shape. When I come back, I'll actually do that with you and we'll do the a couple more shapes on the top, okay? And we'll actually start this process rolling. I, I may even paint a little bit more to show you how I gauge and blurred it and I painted it on upper shapes, okay? So let me hit Command S to save. When it's done, uh, come back. Let me turn off the clicky copy and look at how we are actually starting to paint this car. Let me turn on the small color copy. And this car is starting to, notice I said that, this car is starting to form better values. Actually, um, I'm going to save, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to solve the, on the next movie, we're going to solve the horizon down, including backing off on this color. I know you've been saying, Brian, this is too dark right there. I'll back off on that color, and then we'll paint the vents and the whole bottom area and just watch how fast it goes. Oh, first time I'm saying this. Do not do door lines until you are completed. I have a door line movie coming up. Do not do door lines or body lines until you are completed with all the sheet metal.